الحمد لله الحمد لله الصانع الخلق على أكمل نظام وأحسن طوام الواضع الأشياء في أجدل مقام وأرفق مصام والصلاة والسلام على المؤيد بأبلغ الكلام محمد المبعوث بهداية كافة الأنام كبدر تجلى من بين الغمام وعلى آله وأصحابه الكرام إلى مدى الليالي والأيام الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شيء في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون رب الشحر صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحد العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين. The only place in the Quran where Allah talks about the importance and the conditions for the Friday prayer is practically one single ayah of Surah Al Jumu'ah. It's a very short surah of the Quran revealed in Medina. It's only made up of 11 ayat. And even though the surah is called the surah of Friday, there's only the 10th ayah that directly deals with the subject of the Friday prayer. And then the 11th adds some additional conditions of when the prayer is done, you may go about your business. So the only ayah in the Qur'an, the one statement in the Qur'an that deals with the Friday prayer, the prayer that you and I are attending right now, is this one ayah of Surah Al-Jumu'ah. So it must be very comprehensive. If Allah decides not to speak more on this subject, it must be that this one place is enough. What he has to say is enough and you should really internalize what he has to say. And I should remember the value of what we're doing here. The reason I chose to talk about this ayah today is because the, our, our acts in Islam, the prayer, the fasting, the Friday prayer, the rituals that we perform in this deen, they are of very profound value. When you do something every single day, maybe you forget to realize why it's important. Or because we do this every single week, we lose sight of the fact that this is something very profound. So the first thing I want to do with this khutbah is just share a few minutes with you of what Allah says about how we should treat the Friday prayer. And then perhaps we'll talk about where it belongs in the Qur'an, why Surah Al-Jum'ah and why is this one ayah placed where it's placed. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ila nudiya bis salafi. Those of you who believe, when the call is made towards the prayer, when the call is made towards the prayer, because even in the adhan, we don't say, Hayya ala al-khutbah. We don't say come to the sermon, we say come to the prayer. So the adhan is actually a call to the actual prayer. But our Messenger وسلم, would clearly identify that this sermon, this khutbah that you and I are, are a part of now, is actually a part of the prayer this time. This is why we're not supposed to speak during the khutbah. Because it's the same as you, you and I speaking during the prayer. That's why it burns our good deed. It has a, a particular ethic a particular mannerism that it requires from all of us. And so, even though the Friday prayer is being talked about, Allah calls all of it a prayer at the end of the day. Salat al Jumu'ah. It's not Salah and Qutbah to Allah, like it's two separate things, it's one thing to Him. إِذَا نُذِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ from, uh, from within part of the day of Friday. Allah didn't say when you're called on Friday. He said from within Friday. And this is also important. Because the nation that came before us, the Jews, they were told to observe the Saturday, the Sabbath. And that Sabbath, they had to observe it the entire day, from the, from the break of day to the, the, the end of the day. They could not you know, do anything else but the worship of Allah. The kind of observance we're supposed to have 
in the Friday prayer hours, in the Jum'ah, Salatul Jum'ah hours, it's not even a whole hour actually for most of us, not even that much, this used to be an entire day for them. I used to live in New York in actually a very orthodox Jewish community. People used to think I'm Jewish when I lived in that neighborhood. They used to come and say shalom to me all the time. And I could tell you on Saturday, it's like nobody lives there. Nobody comes out of their house. All the stores are closed. All the businesses are shut down. That's their entire day. We don't have that. In the Muslim world, in the Muslim world, when are all the stores shut down and there's no business going on? During the Jumu'ah prayer. That, that hour, that hour and a half. And then everything goes back to normal and hustle and bustles again. So, إِذَا نُودِيَ لِصَلَاتِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ This is actually a gift of Allah to this ummah. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah wants to lighten your burden. There used to be people before us, you know, وَيَضَعُ عَنْهُمْ إِسْرَهُمْ وَالْأَغْلَالَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah wants to remove from them the chains that used to be on them. The, the nations before us had tougher regulations in the sharia that was given, in the law that was given to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Allah made things easier. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ Allah wants things to be easier for you. He wants ease for you. So we're not told to observe 24 hours of the Friday. Just this little bit of time, that's it. So these few hours are extremely valuable to the ummah. They're extremely valuable to Allah. فَاسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ So he says, therefore, rush to the remembrance of Allah. Therefore, فَا الْفَاءَ السَّبَابِيَ Therefore, rush to the remembrance of Allah. It's not the whole day, it's just a small treasure within the day of Friday that you have to respect, so make sure you rush. And the idea here is to encourage the Muslims to take advantage of these valuable hours. And then, no, he doesn't even say, rush to the prayer. فَسَمَّاهَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ He called it the remembrance of Allah. Now we're learning what is the Friday get-together to Allah. It is nothing but the remembrance of Allah. You and I sitting here together listening to the khutbah and me speaking in the khutbah is also the dhikr of Allah. Us praying together is also the dhikr of Allah. To Allah, this is the value of the Friday prayer, the remembrance of Allah. Some people expect that the khutbah should be about the political situation. Some people expect the khutbah should be about the economic situation. Or it should be about some high level intellectual matter. Because we keep hearing about the akhirah, we keep hearing about Allah and the Prophet wasallam and being kind and being honest and being truthful. Oh come on, give me something new already. Give me something new. It's every Friday, same thing. Oh, another ayah, another hadith. You know, there should be, it's a little bit more variety is, is in order here. But Allah says it's just a remembrance of Allah, it's the reminder of Allah. And a reminder by definition is something you've already heard before. If you had never heard about it before, it would be naba. It would be hadith. It wouldn't be dhikr. The whole, the Muslim should mentally be prepared that they're going to reinforce certain values when they come here. They're not here to, they didn't come here. You and I didn't come here to hear or learn something new necessarily. We came to remember Allah. And so Allah is teaching us the value of repetition and the value of reinforcement. Just because we know this deen, just because we understand its basic teachings, just because somebody knows truth is important, doesn't mean they always live by the truth. Maybe it's important that they hear truth is important. And after this khutbah is done, they're gonna go and call their father and say, I didn't speak the truth. I'm sorry, but I need to confess this to you. Because they needed to hear it. Sometimes we just need to hear things we already know, you know. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ فَعَتِ الذِّكْرَى Remind, reminder has benefit. Reminder has benefit. And that's a, a communal reminder for all of us together. فَسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ And then he adds, وَذَرُ الْبَيْعِ Leave business. And he didn't say business actually, he said leave the sale. وَذَرُ الْبَيْعِ Leave the sale. It's remarkable. لَمْ يَقُلْ وَذَرُ التِّجَارَةِ Leave the business. وَذَرُ الْاشْتِرَاءِ Leave the buying. Leave the buying. No, leave the selling. Why? Those of you that are in business understand this. Those of you that work in sales understand this. A business has lots of parts. You have to file the taxes, you have to do the cleaning, you have to do the inventory, you have to pay the payroll, you have to do all this stuff. But there's only one part of the business that makes everything else worth it. It's the sale. That's the one part of the business. If you don't have that, nothing else matters. Then nothing else matters. You know, if there's a boss, he's got a, he's got a store, he's got 10 employees, and on Friday he has to write the paycheck, as he's about to, he's signing the check and his ribs start hurting, because it's a check. So he's, ah, I'll, I'll sign it after Salah. You know, I'll come back after Jum'ah and sign it. But if a customer walks into the store, and it's already one o'clock, 
and you got a 20 minute drive to the masjid, ah, uh, khutbah doesn't start until 1.40, okay, he'll let the customer, and he's putting more things in the cart, and he's piling it on and piling it on, and you're like, okay, okay, it's 1.15, I can still make the prayer, it's okay, it's okay, I don't want to bother the customer, you know, I don't want to bother the customer. So Allah says, leave the sale. He wants you to leave the thing you want the most, and come here. وَذَرُوا ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ That is better for you. Allah is actually letting us know that when we come here, we have to leave the most attractive things in the world. When you and I come to the Friday prayer, we have to leave the world behind. For some of us, when I was in business school, we learned the term LIFO, last in, first out. It's an accounting term. You know, and people use that policy to attend the Friday prayer. They're going to park the car outside on the street, they're going to make sure they're the last one here, maybe pray by the shoes, so they can be the first one out because everybody else is going to be stuck with their cars. You know, you just want last in and first out. Why did you even come? This, you, you were invited to these precious hours, not so you can fulfill some internal guilt you have. Your dad used to bring you to Friday prayer and so you drag yourself here. You came here because you wanted to remember Allah, because you wanted to leave the world behind. We can't even leave our cell phones behind. We can't even leave those in the car now. We can't even stop playing with them while khutbah is going on. Subhanallah. وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعَ Leave it. Leave the most enticing things in the world. That's better for you if you knew. What I want to do now in this khutbah is actually share with you the placement of this remarkable, remarkable surah. Just some such brief advice. Just these few hours, if you can condense you know, that give them the ihtimam, give them the importance, the value that they deserve. It's good for you. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ If you actually knew, this is actually something good for all of you. But what fascinates me about this ayah is that it belongs to Surah Al-Jumu'ah, which is a long, it's 11 ayat, it's not that long, but it's a long conversation and only one ayah about Jumu'ah. What's going on before this ayah? There are two subjects before this ayah. The first subject of this surah is actually the appointment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضَ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُّبِينٍ Allah describes His perfection and how everything in the skies and the earth declares Allah's perfection. The King, the ultimately pure Al-Quddus, the ultimate authority, the one who has all the wisdom. And then in the next ayah, He describes that He sent a messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fil ummiyin, among people who didn't know how to read and write. Ummi, ka'annahu kan, hina ma kharaja min ummihi, some say. As he used to be when he came out of his mother. He has no education like he was when he was a baby. He sent this messenger among the most illiterate nation on the planet at the time. They didn't have so much as a brick building. They didn't have streets and highways. In the middle of the desert, there were Roman empires and Persian empires and the Chinese civilization and the Indian civilizations. And they had philosophies and architecture and all of this stuff. And here you have the middle of the desert, a bunch of tribal nations, tribal groups that keep on fighting each other over virtually no resources. And in the middle of this place that nobody cares about on the planet, nobody cares to invade even this space. The Roman Empire didn't care about Arabia. The Persians didn't care about Arabia. Why not? What are you going to do? Even if you take it over, what are you going to send your soldiers to get barbecued for? You know? They haven't discovered oil yet. So there's no value in going there. And in the middle of that, I mean, people who don't even have that kind of education, he sent a messenger from among them who would do what? He would purify them. He'd recite the revelations onto them. He'd cleanse these people. He would purify them. He'd purify their minds and their hearts. He would teach them the book. He sent someone who teaches them the book. And he teaches them wisdom. Now we are learning that the entire life of the Prophet ﷺ is four things. Is reduced, his entire task is reduced to four things in this remarkable ayah. He recites the ayat onto people. He recites the revelation onto people. He purifies people. And then he teaches them the law of Allah. He teaches them the book and the law. And he teaches them the wisdom that has been revealed. This is all he does. This is his entire mission. And then Allah says, this, this started with, in this is place that nobody knew on the planet, and in one statement, Allah changed the map of the world. 
Subhanallah in one statement. وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ There are others than them, other than the Arabs. Other than these people in the land of Hijaz. Other people. They don't, they're not the same race. They're not the same ethnicity. They're not the same color. They're not the same language. They may be oceans apart. They haven't joined them yet. لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ they haven't joined them yet. Allah gave the news in that one statement that that messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam who had no microphone and no internet connection who was just speaking to a small group of people reciting the ayat to them that voice will project all over this globe to the point where we're going to be sitting in Irving, Texas listening to a khutbah repeating the words of Allah that were recited once by the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah already informed the ummah that we haven't come yet and here we are. And there are others who haven't joined yet. The process of others joining and joining and joining this ummah and making it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Because this thing that brings us together in Islam is bigger than race. It's bigger than tribe. It's bigger than the color of our skin. Look at the skin colors around you. Look at the ethnicities around you sitting in each row. Look at what this deen has done. It has brought people together like nothing ever in human history has brought people together. Nothing else. And so Allah Azza wa Jal describes this amazing thing that the Qur'an did, that the Prophet recited onto the people Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It brought the world together. It brought worlds of people together, otherwise they would have nothing to do with each other. They would have no reason to be together. Nothing else brings us together except La ilaha illallah, except Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ And so after he says this, this is a favor of Allah, this is not something small. That's the favor of Allah, He gives it to whoever He wants. Wallahu dhul fadlil azim. Allah is the possessor of the ultimate favor. The ultimate favor that this book should not be reduced to that desert. This book should ripple, and its message should ripple, and it should shake the entire world. It should go every nook and cranny in the world. So that we can re re repeat and recite what the Messenger was given. This is the first passage of this surah. Surah Al-Jumu'ah is about what the messenger started with and where it went all over the world. Where it, it is meant to go all over the world. That's the first passage. The second passage is actually a completely different subject. The Jewish community and their failure with their book. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا التَّوْرَاتَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُوا أَسْفَارَ the example of those who were loaded on with the responsibility of the Torah, the previous revelation, the book given to Musa. And they didn't carry it. They didn't carry that responsibility. Their example is like mules, donkeys. Yahmilu asfara, that is carrying loads and volumes and volumes of books. They're just carrying volume. What does that mean? This is not a scathing criticism of the Jewish community. It's an example of those who have been given revelation, but they don't ponder upon that revelation. They don't recite it onto the people in the previous ayat. They don't recite it onto the people that the, like their messenger used to. They don't purify themselves and each other by the word of Allah like their messenger used to. They don't teach the book. They don't teach its meaning and its laws and its injunctions like their messenger used to. They don't try to internalize its wisdom like it, their messenger used to. When they forget about these roles that the book was supposed to play, then this is nothing but a mule carrying books. If the Qur'an was reduced, like they reduced the Torah, if the Qur'an was reduced just to something to recite and you don't even think about it, you just memorize certain words and you chant them and you don't even know what you're saying. That's all the Qur'an is. If the Qur'an is the only thing it is, is a security for your car so you keep it in your dashboard, so you don't get into an accident. Or you can hang it, the Ayatul Kursi in your rear view mirror or something. Because you don't have dual side airbags. You know? If that's what Qur'an has become to you. If the only value of Qur'an is to recite a little bit of it before the wedding ceremony and that's it, that's all the Qur'an will ever need. Or only open it up when somebody passes away or something. If that's what's happened, then this is nothing but mules carrying a load. This is not why the book was sent. It was sent, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ That's why it was sent. Don't do with your book what the people before you have done with their book. This is what Allah is saying in these ayat. And then something happens, something remarkable in the Qur'an. Allah makes connections, you and I could never have made them. Allah puts things together. You know, this kalam is hakim, and one of the meanings of hakim is actually muhkam. Things that are tied to each other, woven into each other, put together. 
We could not have put it together like this. What is the subject that Allah put together with it? He says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ هَادُوا إِنْ زَعَمْتُمْ أَنَّكُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ لِلَّهِ مِنْ دُونِ النَّاسِ فَتَمَنَّوُ الْمَوْتِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And then later on, إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Tell these, tell, tell these people that, are, that have been Jews, tell them those that, that have done wrong with their book, that if you think that you're friends with Allah, as opposed to all other people, you're more special than everybody else, then why don't you wish for death? And they will never wish for death. And tell them the death that you're running away from. الموت الذي تفرون منه The death that you are running away from. فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ It is going to meet you no matter what you do. It is as good as already met you. ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ Then you will be taken back to the one who knows the unseen and the seen. The knower of the unseen and the seen. فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Then he will tell you what you used to do. What does all of this have to do with Jumu'ah? The first subject was how the message will spread all over the world. The second subject was how the people before us, the Jewish nation, they didn't do right by their book, and they became obsessed with this life to the point where they want to run away from death. And the third subject is the Jumu'ah prayer. You know why that's important? It's important because the Prophet ﷺ, his entire mission to describe the perfection of Allah through, through, through reciting the ayat of Allah, by purifying people's minds and their hearts, by teaching them what Allah says in His book, the law that Allah has revealed, the wisdom that Allah has revealed, that process is actually carried out as a community every single Friday prayer. We fulfill the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, حينما نتلو على أنفسنا آياته When we recite the word of Allah, يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ This is how we relive the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah put this in place, this program that you and I come to every Friday. You don't have to be emailed about what time you have to be here. You don't have to see a Facebook post what time the event comes. There's no flyers for Jumu'ah prayer. We just show up every single time on our own, unadvertised. The old and the young. The knowledgeable and the not knowledgeable, the old Muslim and the new Muslim, everybody just shows up. This is a program Allah designed so we can relive the legacy of our Messenger ﷺ. But there's more. The point of this gathering is so we refresh our relationship with the same thing that the Prophet used to recite ﷺ. We renew our relationship with the Qur'an. That's the purpose of this, these few hours. That's why they're so valuable. That's why you have to rush and get it. And there's something powerful about you, you and I coming together and getting it, than you getting it on your own. Something happens to your iman and mine when we're standing together and praying together. When we're standing side by side listening to the word of Allah. When literally, اعتصمنا بحبل الله جميعا ولم نتفرق. We held on to the word of Allah all together. And we're not divided. Literally, we're all standing together. When Allah says, وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ There are others who haven't even joined them yet. What better picture of Muslims joining together than the Friday prayer? Every single week the ummah joins together, joins together, joins together. But the second subject of this, this surah was how they didn't do right by their book. And as a result, they became obsessed with this life and they run away from death. Look at the remarkable picture of the Friday prayer. It is actually called Yawmul Jumu'ah. And two surahs later in Surah Al-Taghabun, Yawma yajma'ukum li yawmil jam'ah. The day he will gather you for the day of gathering. Here it's Yawmul Jumu'ah. Hunaka qal Yawmul Jam'ah. Why? Because this Friday prayer is rehearsal. It is practice for the day of judgment. We will stand in front of Allah. We will come before Allah and He will address us and He will talk to us and He will remind us of what we used to do. And now we come before Allah willingly. We come rushing and running towards Allah. On that day, people are going to be running out of their graves. Sira'an, ka'annahum ila nusubin yufidun. Like they're running towards a goal, trying to get there before one another. But th this time we come before Allah willingly. Why do we do so? Because when we are raised on the day of judgment, then we come before Allah willingly also. We, if we came before Allah willingly in this life, then we will, and happily, we will come before Allah happily in that life. Allah wants us to relive the gathering of judgment day every single Friday. That's actually what we do here. We remember our gathering. This is a small picture of what it's going to look like on judgment day when all of us are going to be standing together. That's what this is. That's what they forgot. They lost sight of the fact that life is temporary. You know why people forget that? They get distracted. 
And so I want to take you to the last ayah of the surah. This is it's absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. After talking to us about the value of the Friday prayer, Allah Azza wa Jal talked to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it began, the surah began talking about His Messenger and it ends talking to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا when they saw some trade, some business opportunity. Back in Medina, there used to be these trade caravans, you know, groups of camels coming together from outside of town. It's a rare opportunity for you to buy something, sell something, do some business. Jumu'ah is going on, and there's a caravan passing by with lots of new items, and they're making noise, and it's like a circus or a festival or something. Aw lahwan, or it's entertaining. In faddu ilayha. They broke off and ran towards it. What an amazing use of language. The word infidad in Arabic is actually used for glass to shatter. When somebody violates the Friday prayer and breaks off and goes somewhere else instead, Allah describes it like a glass that's shattered. Like this gathering is fragile. And it's supposed to be together. And when you break it, you can't put it back together again. This is a sensitive, sensitive thing. A criticism is made. وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمَا And they left you standing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is standing there giving the sermon and people still didn't know the importance of the Friday prayer so they got distracted by some caravan or some tricks, some festival and they run off and say, let me check out what's going on over there. To this day, there are two people, two things that will keep you from doing right by the Friday prayer. To this day, two big things. The first of them is going to be business. You're, you finish your meeting late, the sale, the office, the project, and you're like, ah, oh, let me just finish some more, some more, some more. At least I'll catch the second rak'ah or something. You know? I still got time, I still got time. Oh, at least, okay, the khutbah started, but it's not finished yet. Oh, they haven't said aqimi salat yet. Man, I caught the ruku. You know, that's the attitude. Let me just get at least some of it, you know? At least I got it over with. That's the attitude. You know? And that's because you're too busy with your business. Your business was more important than the reminder that you will die and stand in front of Allah. Let me tell you something, all that business is going to be gone when we're in our grave. And when we're standing in front of Allah. Then nobody's going to say, wait, hold on, Ya Allah, I got an appointment at 2.30. No, no, no. That's going to be gone. That conversation is over. And then the second culprit is lahu, entertainment. Somebody's watching a movie. They're watching it on their mobile device. Oh, I got to finish the episode before I go into the masjid. You know? They're busy playing, they're busy gaming, they're busy playing sports. And they just, it takes all their time away. When you, once you get sucked into entertainment, when you're watching a movie, playing a game, playing a video game, you lose sight of the hours. The sun rises and the sun falls. Empires rise and fall and you're still in the middle of your game. You don't know what's going on in the outside world. So you forget about the time of prayer. These are the culprits that take people away from prayer. So Allah says, وَإِذَا رَأُوا تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا Let me tell you something. In today's day and age, we don't have to run away from the Friday prayer to be criminals. We could be doing phone business on our phone. You could be doing financial transactions on your mobile banking app. You could just sit in a khutbah and you're like, ah, this khutbah is boring, man. This guy talks so slow, I don't even understand his accent. What's he even saying? Oh, this one talks too fast. And you open up your angry birds and you start again. You didn't even have to leave to abandon the khutbah. You think Allah doesn't count that as abandonment? Allah doesn't count that as a disregard for the Friday prayer? You and I didn't come here to be entertained. We came here to be reminded. Reminded of how short our life is. From last Friday to this Friday, how quickly did it go by? How quickly did it go by? قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ رَازِقِينَ And Allah is the best of all providers. When this ummah, when we as a people, and I'm not here to make the people who came late to the Friday prayer feel guilty, but if you feel a little bit guilty, I'm happy. Inshallah next week, I love you for the sake of Allah. I love you and love you. Just try to come earlier. Just not because, of, because I told you or anything, but because you want to show Allah that you care about this thing. This, this one institution, this Friday prayer, if you could just fix this one thing, it's a very good indicator of the state of the ummah, the entire nation of the entire nation of Islam, the entire nation. How are we treating our Friday prayer? And once the prayer is done, yes, fanta shiru filad, go spread out in the land, do what you want. Wabtagum in fadlillah. Just keep continue to remember Allah. Wadkurullah kathiran. Just because Friday prayer is over doesn't mean your commitment to Allah is over. 
So I'm seriously hoping that I, you know, I dedicated this khutbah to just talk about the khutbah, just to talk about the Jumu'ah prayer because it's something very valuable to this ummah. This is how we connect with one another. And the, the idea of lahaq, of, of lihaq even, of joining one another is that when the Friday prayer is over, we say salam to each other, we get to know one another, our brotherhood grows, and our connections grow within this ummah, and thus the ummah gets even more united. May Allah Azza wa unite us in this world as He will in the next, and, and may Allah Azza wa be pleased with us as we rush to His prayer here, as, we will be, as, as He may make us of those that are pleased with Him, and He with us when we stand before Him on the Day of Judgment. Barakallahu li wa lakum, wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa